In this video, we're going to show you the basic operation of the Gaja Classic. That is include all the controls, how to brew, and how to steam. First, we're going to look at the controls. Up top, here's your main power switch. When you turn that on, the light will be illuminated. This is your steam switch. When you hit this, your temperature ready light, which is here, will go off and the machine will heat up to steam temperature. When you reach steam temperature, this light will illuminate. This switch is for your brew switch. This turns the pump on and off. Turn the pump that goes on and that's off. On the side here, we have the steam knob. You open and close this for steaming or if you want to dispense hot water out of the wand, you also use this by opening and closing. Here's how we brew pods, ESC size pods, with the Gaza Classic. Always put your two-way pin in the bottom of the portafilter. Use your pressurized single filter basket. Wait, you can identify it by the looks in here. And it's one tiny hole down there, right in the center, and there are a lot of holes in the middle here. Snap, snap, snap that into place. Eh, hang on, hang on a second. Yeah, I want to start again. All right, stand by. Here's how, here's how you brew pods with the Gaja Classic with a pressurized filter basket. Use the small filter basket, put your two-way pin in the bottom of the porta filter, push your filter basket in, snap it in place, place your ESC sized pod into the filter basket, then stick the handle in the machine, we'll put a cup. Then we hit the brew switch up top here, turn the pump on. And you'll see how the flow works on the Gaja Classic here. At a good speed, you get about an ounce in around 20 seconds, give or take a little bit. This is what you should expect. There's something close to this. Here's how we brew with pre-ground coffee. If you don't have your own grinder, high quality grinder, where you're going to dial in your shots perfectly, use the double shot pressurized filter basket. That's this one here. A lot of holes here, one tiny hole in the middle. Put your two-way pin into the porta filter, snap this into place. And now use this for whether you're doing a single or double shot of pre-ground. Take your pre-ground coffee, place that in there. No need to tamp. Even out. Now you want to make sure that you're using something close to an espresso grind as you're not using drip coffee, a drip coffee grind. That will, that will not give good results. You turn on your brew switch up top. And this pressurized filter basket will help get a good crema with most coffees out there. And that's what you can expect from the double pressurized filter basket. If you want to brew your espresso using a professional barista technique, here's what you would do. You would not use the two-way pen. You'd use the commercial double shot filter basket that comes with the machine. Just snap that in. And you want to have a grinder, a high quality burr grinder that's adjustable. So you can adjust the grind based on how your coffee's flowing. What I like to do is fill your filter basket loose with the coffee. Now, these are just basic techniques, okay? Rub the coffee off the top like that. You'll have a tamper. Place as level as you can. Just a firm pressure. Place the handle into the machine. Put your cup under. And you want to get two ounces in about 25 seconds, give or take a little bit from when you push the brew button. That's a pretty nice flow. If you find that your coffee is flowing at this speed, it's too slow and the coffee will taste bitter. Grind your coffee a little coarser and try again. Now here's a shot that's brewing too fast. So at this point, the taste will not be good and you'll want to grind your coffee a little finer, or you can use a pressurized filter basket. 
Always make sure you have good fresh coffee when you're brewing. When you want to steam your milk, first thing you do is hit your steam switch. The temperature ready light goes off. Now the machine is heating up. While the machine's heating up, that'd be a good time to pour your milk into your pitcher. What I like to do is put enough milk to go to around where the spout starts. That's a good spot. Machine's heating up now. When we get done, we'll pour the milk into a clear glass so you can actually see the froth, see what it looks like. It'll take roughly 60 seconds to heat up for the temperature ready light to go on. Now that the temperature ready light is on, we're going to froth the milk. First thing we do is purge any condensation out of the wand. That's normal. Place your pitcher underneath the steam wand. Open the knob all the way, which is like one full turn. Keep the tip of the wand below the surface of the milk. There's no special technique that you should use here. The machine will do the work. Nice to get a little roll in there. When you have enough froth and you just want to heat the milk, take the milk and cover those air intake holes right there. That's not froth anymore. Now it's just heating it. Feel the pitcher. Or if you get a, if you get a, um, a thermometer, you can watch the temperature of the milk. Don't really want to go anything over 140 degrees. That's pretty hot now. When you take your pitcher down, off, always wipe the wand and give it a purge. Now we'll show you what the froth looks like on this. And makes a pretty nice creamy froth. Now that you're done frothing, you're going to want to cool that boiler back down to steam temperature if you want to, or for brew temperature, so you can brew another coffee. Turn the steam switch off. We'll take our cup, put it into the steam wand, hit the brew switch, and we'll let the water run until you have a full stream of water coming through. And yeah, there's no more steam. Okay, steam is stopped. Turn the brew switch off and you're ready to brew again. So here's a summary of what we just talked about. If you're doing pre-ground coffee, you don't have a grinder, you're going to want to use a double shot pressurized filter basket with a two-way pin. If you're using a pod, ESC pod, you want to use a single shot pressurized filter basket with a two-way pin. If you have your own grinder and you can dial the coffee and just perfect, use the double shot commercial filter basket and that'll work perfect for that. Now remember if your coffee's running too fast, quicker than two ounces in 25 seconds, you want to grind finer. If it's going really, really slow, you have to grind coarser. So we're shooting for about two ounces in around 25 seconds. Always make sure you have really good coffee quality and it's fresh. So if you have bad coffee, there's no matter what, you won't be able to get a good shot of coffee out of this. We highly recommend leaving the port filter in the machine at all time to keep it hot. Heat is very important uh, when making your shots of espresso. The machine will get warm. That's normal. It's actually pretty hot. It's a hot boiler right inside here, and this is stainless steel. So that is perfectly normal. This is a cup warmer, so this will also get pretty hot. That's also perfectly normal. You're steaming. If the machine is producing steam out of the wand, the machine is fine. If you're not getting a froth, uh, any kind of froth for any reason, it's not the machine. It's going to be in the cleaning of this or this tip. Maybe it gotten pushed up. Like, for example, if you take this off and you go down like that, it's possible to hit this up. Just take a chopstick or something, push it back down, it'll click into place. I can't reiterate that enough. If there's steam coming out of the wand, the machine is fine. It will froth, just needs a cleaning or a little maintenance. If you turn the machine on for the first time and you can't prime it, make sure those two tubes there are under the surface of the water. Sometimes when you put the reservoir in, they can get turned up and they actually be facing up, it'll be sucking air. That's the basics of the Gaja Classic.